Hello, I am Beck, and today I will be drawing a D&D character based on the roll of the dice. Let's bring out the Tower of, of Destiny! So we have an Earth Genasi Ranger, and those of you who've seen my previous videos will know that I have done the other elements of Genasi before, so this one is kind of completing the set. Um, Genasi in general uh, have ancestry that goes back to a very powerful genie of the elemental plane, and that sort of earth, air, fire, water, they have their specialty based on what their bloodline comes from. So Earth Genasi, their ancestry goes back to someone named Dao, and uh, <laughs> they inherit Dao's steadfa steadfast strength and control over Earth. Um, Earth Genasi's skin, according to D&D Beyond, can be the colors of stone and earth or human skin tone with glittering sparkles like gem dust. Some Earth Genasis have lines marking their skins like cracks, either showing glimmering gem-like veins or a dim yellowish glow. Earth Genasis hair can appear carved of stone or crystal or resemble strands of spun metal. As an Earth Genasi, you get the following special traits. Uh, dark vision, which doesn't really seem to be that special in D&D, but it's counted. Uh, something called Earth Walk, which means you can move across difficult terrain without expending any extra movement. Uh, merge with Stone, so you know the Blade Ward cantrip and can cast it as normal. And you can also cast it as a bonus action a number of times equal to your proficiency bonus, regaining all expended uses when you finish a long rest. So the blade ward cantrip means you extend your hand and trace a sig sigil of warning in the air until the end of your next turn you have resistance against bludgeoning, piercing and slashing damage dealt by weapon attacks. So that's pretty cool. I don't really know what that has to do with merging with stone. I would have assumed that meant that you could kind of turn into stone or something. Anyway, uh, merge with stone. At 5th level, Merge with Stone um, allows you to cast the Pass Without Trace spell and um, without requiring a material component. Handy. Now, as a ranger, you are an experienced hunter and tracker. So, as the name suggests, you are good at fighting from a ranged attack position. You have a longbow and a quiver of 20 arrows when you start out. You also get uh, two short swords or two simple melee weapons. So you are good at sort of melee um, close range combat as well. You have a trait called favored enemy, which means you have advantage on wisdom checks to track your favored enemies, as well as on intelligence checks to recall information about them. So the justification is even at first level you have significant experience studying, tracking, hunting and even talking to a certain type of enemy. And by type of en enemy that sort of means like uh, aberrations or beasts or celestials, dragons, giants plants, whatever, you have to sort of pick a category and that's your favored enemy and so you have a special area of knowledge when it comes to those. You also have something called Natural Explorer. You are particular, particularly familiar with one type of natural environment and are adept at traveling and surviving in such regions. So for example, uh, types of terrain classifications in D&D are arctic, coast, desert, forest, grassland, mountain, swamp, or the underdark. And there are different creatures that you can find in each of those. Um, there's also urban, 
which wasn't on this list, but uh, that's another classification. <laughs> I guess you could be a ranger in an urban environment, but it does kind of contradict the description of a ranger, which is uh, scrolling up to find it. As a ranger, you are a warrior of the wilderness. You spe specialize in hunting the monsters that threaten the edge of civilization, whether it be humanoid raiders, rampaging beasts and monstrosities, terrible giants, or deadly dragons. So in an urban environment, you could argue that's a little bit jungle-like in terms of uh, treating the swamps of people as plants and the buildings as trees and stuff, but Ultimately, a ranger is usually someone who stays away from large crowds and doesn't like the hustle and bustle of a city, so they probably wouldn't have that as their special, special knowledgeable area. The ranger class also asks you to choose a ranger archetype. I think um, in the past I had an Erginazi who was a Swarm Keeper. One of the archetypes is Swarm Keeper. That's very cool because you can you have like a little swarm of bugs or whatever you want them to be really and you can use them to attack people. But in this case I went with Hunter. So the other options were Fey Wanderer or Beast Master. Um, and I think Hunter makes the most sense for this character who I am going to call Ruby. Ruby is a hunter, so emulating the hunter archetype means accepting your place as a defense between the people you protect and the terrors of the wilderness. As you walk the hunter's path, you learn specialized techniques for fighting the threats you face, from rampaging ogres to towering giants and terrifying dragons. So I feel like this is really the classic ranger. Uh, good at hunting, good at tracking. Yeah. Classic range of business. Now if we look at her abilities, Ruby is extra strong and extra dexterous. And uh, I like that for her because she's a ranger. Uh, also as an Earth Genazi, I feel like you would be pretty strong. And just being dexterous is getting around the jungle. So it wouldn't make a lot of sense if she wasn't strong and dexterous given what I'm going to say is her upbringing of growing up in this forest jungle kind of area. She's very good at moving heavy objects and she's very good at uh, doing the more dexterous things. Which includes stuff like being able to move nimbly and quickly or quietly and to keep from falling when you're on tricky footing. So acrobatics, sleight of hand, stealth. Um, I don't know if she'd need so much sleight of hand where she's been growing up and living thus far, but she definitely would need the acrobatics, the walking along a tree branch, the moving silently when you're hunting something, and uh, obviously strength. She needs to be able to, at, at the very least, pull herself up onto a branch just from like grabbing it. So yeah, good rolls for the strength and dex. Constitution is just average, so I don't know that she's needed to do anything that would cause her to be weary, so she hasn't needed to necessarily stay up all night doing anything or um, go without food. She's an excellent hunter, so as long as she <laughs> is in her preferred landscape, she's never needed to starve, like she's never struggled to find food. Um, her intelligence is negative too. I kind of get that. Uh, she probably doesn't really read. I don't even know if she's ever learned to read. She may have. She, depending on who raised her, she may have learned the basics of reading. But I think she's very much the. Uh, she she can notice her surroundings, but she doesn't really need that sort of the memory that comes with the intelligence. Um, it would be possible that even though she is really, really good at navigating, that she couldn't, say, draw a map of even the area that she grew up in. Her brain just doesn't work that way. So, um, yeah, I don't think she's particularly intelligent. And also, the wisdom is negative one, so I don't know if she's necessarily that wise either. Um, 
growing up in just one place, you get to know that place very well and you get to know the creatures that live in that place very well, but you don't have a broader understanding of the world and I think that would make her a little bit gullible and um, just lacking in the life experience that you generally gain a lot of wisdom through. Now, plus one charisma. I think that um, it's probably an intimidation type of charisma rather than being charming. I don't think she's ever really needed to be charming, so I see her as a very blunt speaking kind of character, and um, she's got that kind of intimidation where she'll state something that comes off very threateningly, but she's just saying it is a fact. And it's scary because you know that it's a fact, where a lot of people might threaten to kill you and it seems like some crazy threat like if you do this I'll rip your head off but she'll say it more along the lines of if you do this I will rip your head off and it's more of an FYI and that that's just worse because you know she's not joking you know she will seriously do that <sighs> I really struggled to do a background slash scene with this I I'm sure you noticed that I don't usually do terribly complicated backgrounds or um locations when I do my characters and I thought I was going to be really cool and have a shooting an arrow from a tree which she is to be fair but I kind of I drew my my lines on the same layer that I did my sketch and I didn't want to go back and do it again so you probably noticed it's got a very unique texture on the wood there um, and then trying to experiment the leaves in the background versus the leaves that are on the immediate branch and getting the lighting to look like a forest, like the sort of modelled tree lighting. I think it came out fine in the end, but I got so frustrated with it. Oh my god. A little bit of behind the scenes information about drawing there. Sometimes you stuff up and you really can't be bothered to do it again, so you just improvise. And uh, yeah, tree texture. Great. Beautiful. What were we talking about? Ruby, of course. I think officially her background will be that she probably, she grew up among her family, among, I think they're probably druids rather than rangers. There might be one member who was a ranger before her and she's taking over that role. Uh, but generally I think she lives among a small village of uh, just nature loving druid peaceful types. The hunter in her would indicate that um, probably she's she's more of a hunter in the terms of like keeping civilization away from the endangered animals in her forest. So she's hunting people, <laughs> and um, but only if they come into her natural environment, into her land. So I think in terms of say why she would join an adventuring party, I think it would be that someone or something is threatening the whole forest and it's bigger than she can just hunt on her own she needs help and um she has to leave the forest in order to achieve this goal so in addition to not knowing her way around outside the forest and not understanding the customs of the people and all of that stuff she would also just need to find kind of a, a secondary tribe a pseudo tribe for herself um, in order to keep her tribe, her family, safe. And if the adventuring party can offer that, then that's, that's what she'll do. She'll join up with anyone who's willing to help her. But yeah, that is Ruby. What do we think of her? Especially what do you think of how I was trying to make her head and her hair look a little bit like a cracked geode and I'm realizing now that using red probably wasn't the smartest idea because it does just look shot on her face especially it looks kind of just like she's bleeding um I was going for a gemstone effect let me know if I was successful or if you were thinking wow she just got gashed in the face um any feedback is appreciated but I'm not going to do it again so it's just like FYI Anyway, <laughs> thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video and if you did, please consider subscribing and if you're already subscribed, thank you very, very much. 
and I'll catch you next week. Okay, bye.